June 1983, Wayne McDonnell was tasked by the CIA to provide an assessment of the Gateway experience in terms of its mechanics and ultimate practicality. This top-secret document was declassified after 20 years in 2003, revealing some powerful techniques to synchronize both hemispheres of the brain. What was revealed in Wayne's assessment could be one of the most powerful techniques ever discovered in regards to vibration, the human energy field, and synchronization of the heart and brain. The particular technique we will be looking at today is called hemi-sync, the synchronization of the left and right sides of the human brain and how this technique can substantially raise one's vibration and be used as a powerful tool for manifestation. The Gateway Experience is a training system designed to bring enhanced strength, focus and coherence to the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output between the left and right hemispheres so as to alter consciousness, moving it outside the physical sphere, so as to ultimately escape even the restrictions of time and space. The participant then gains access to the various levels of intuitive knowledge which the universe offers. Hypnosis is basically a technique which permits acquisition of direct access to the sensory motor cortex and pleasure centers and the lower cerebral portions of the right side of the human brain following successful disengagement of the stimulus screening function of the left hemisphere of the brain. The left hemisphere of the brain is the self-cognitive, verbal and linear reasoning component of the mind. It fulfills the function of screening incoming stimuli by categorizing, accessing and assigning meaning prior to allowing passage to the right hemisphere of the mind. The right hemisphere, which functions as the non-critical, holistic, non-verbal and pattern-oriented component of the brain appears to accept what the left hemisphere passes to it without question. Consequently, if the left hemisphere can be distracted either through boredom or through reduction to a soporific, semi-sleep state, external stimuli to include hypnotic suggestions, are allowed to pass unchallenged into the right hemisphere where they are accepted and acted upon directly. Transcendental meditation works in a distinctly different fashion. In this technique, intense and protracted single-minded concentration on the process of drawing energy up the spinal cord ultimately results in what appears to be creation of acoustical standing waves in the cerebral ventricles which are then conducted to the gray matter in the cerebral cortex on the right side of the brain. As a result, according to Bentov, these waves will stimulate and eventually polarize the cortex in such a way that it will tend to conduct a signal along the homunculus, starting from the toes and on up. Although normally a period of meditation involving intense concentration and practice for five years or some is required to bring up the kundalini, Bentov states that exposure to mechanical or acoustical vibrations in the range of 4 to 7 Hz for protracted periods may achieve the same effect. The third consciousness altering methodology, which will be briefly described as biofeedback. Biofeedback is somewhat unique in that it actually employs the self-cognitive powers of the left hemisphere to gain access to such areas of the right brain as the lower cerebral, motor and sensory cortices and assorted pain or pleasure centers. Instead of suppressing the left hemisphere, as is done in hypnosis, or largely bypassing and ignoring it as is done in transcendental meditation, biofeedback teaches the left hemisphere first to visualize the desired result and then to recognize the feelings associated with the experience of successful right hemisphere access to the specific lower cerebral cortex, pain or pleasure, or other areas in the manner needed to produce the desired result. At that point, the subject can mentally associate the sensations experienced with the result achieved and can begin to emphasize, by memory recall, the same process to cause its strengthening by affirmation and repetition. In this way, pain can be blocked. Healing can be enhanced, malignant tumors can apparently be suppressed and ultimately destroyed. The body's pleasure centers can be stimulated, and a variety of specific physiological results may be achieved.
Now that we have briefly profiled the basic mechanics of the principal techniques for altering or expanding consciousness which share some of the objectives and or methods employed in the gateway experience, we may proceed to focus on what that technique actually involves. Fundamentally, the gateway experience is a training system designed to bring enhanced strength, focus and coherence to the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output between the left and right hemispheres so as to alter consciousness, moving it outside the physical sphere, so as to ultimately escape even the restrictions of time and space. The participant then gains access to the various levels of intuitive knowledge which the universe offers. What differentiates the gateway experience from forms of meditation is its use of the hemi-sync technique which is defined in a monograph by Monroe Institute trainer Melissa Jager as a state of consciousness defined when the electroencephalogram patterns of both hemispheres are simultaneously equal in amplitude and frequency. Melissa Jager uses a metaphor to help clarify the process involved in the use of hemi-sync in the gateway experience. She points out that the human mind in its natural state may be likened to an ordinary lamp which expends energy in the form of both heat and light but in a chaotic, incoherent way which diffuses its energy over a wide area of rather limited depth. On the other hand, the human mind under the discipline of hemi-sync acts after the fashion of a laser beam which produces a disciplined stream of light. The stream of energy is projected with total coherence of both frequency and amplitude such that the surface area of a laser beam contains billions of times the concentrated energy found in a similar surface area on the sun. Gateway assumes that once the frequency and amplitude of the human brain are rendered coherent, it is possible to begin accelerating both so that the human mind is soon resonating at ever higher vibrational levels. The mind can then bring itself into synchronization with more sophisticated and rarefied energy levels in the universe. The mind, when operating at these increasingly rarefied levels, is assumed to be capable of processing the information thus received through the same fundamental matrix by which it makes sense of ordinary physical sensory input to achieve meaning in a cognitive context. Such meaning is usually perceived visually in the form of symbols, but may also be perceived as astonishing flashes of holistic intuition or even in the form of scenarios involving both visual and oral perception. To achieve synchronization of brain hemispheres, the hemi-sync technique takes advantage of a phenomenon known as the frequency following response which means that if a subject hears a sound produced at a frequency which emulates one of those associated with the operation of the human brain, the brain will try to mimic the same frequency pattern by adjusting its brainwave output. Therefore, if the subject is in a fully awake state, but here's sound frequencies which approximates brainwave output at the theta level. The subject's brain will endeavor to alter its brainwave pattern from the normal beta to the theta level. Since the theta level is associated with sleep, the subject concern may progress from a fully awake to a sleep state as the brain strives to entrain its wave frequency output with the one which the person hears. Since these brainwave frequencies are outside the spectrum of sounds which can be heard in pure form by the human ear, Hemi-sync must produce them based on another phenomenon known as the brain's capacity for deducing beat frequencies. If the human brain is exposed to one frequency in the left ear which is 10 Hz below another audible frequency played in the right ear, rather than hearing either of the two audible frequencies, the brain chooses to hear the difference between them. The beat frequency, thus availing itself of the FF or phenomenon, and using the technique of beat frequencies, the gateway system uses hemi-sync and other audio techniques employing the FF or phenomenon to introduce a variety of frequencies which are played at a virtually subliminal, marginally audible level. The objective is to relax the left hemisphere of the brain, place the physical body in a virtual sleep state, and bring the left and right hemispheres into coherence under conditions designed to promote the production of ever higher amplitude and frequency of brainwave output.
However, brain coherence through entrainment to beat frequencies introduced via stereo headphones is only part of the reason why the gateway system works. It is also designed to achieve the physical quietude characteristic of deep transcendental meditative states which brings about a complete alteration of the fundamental resonance pattern associated with the sound frequencies produced by the human body. Yoga, Zen or Transcendental Meditation, if practiced long enough, will produce a change in the sound frequency with which the human heart resonates throughout the entire body. According to Bentoff, this change in resonance results from elimination of what the medical profession calls the bifurcation echo, so that the sound of the heartbeat can move synchronously up and down the circulatory system in harmonious resonance approximately seven times a second. Bentov describes the role played by the bifurcation echo as follows. When the left ventricle of the heart ejects blood, the aorta, being elastic, balloons out just beyond the valve and causes a pressure pulse to travel down along the aorta. When the pressure pulse reaches the bifurcation in the lower abdomen, part of the pressure pulse rebounds and starts traveling up the aorta. If in the meantime the heart ejects more blood and a new pressure pulse is traveling down, these depressure points will eventually collide somewhere along the aorta and produce an interference pattern. By placing the body in a sleep-like state, the gateway tapes achieve the same goal as meditation in that it places the body in such a profoundly relaxed state that the bifurcation echo slowly fades away as the heart lessens the force and frequency with which it pushes blood into the aorta. The result is a regular, rhythmic sine wave pattern of sound which echoes throughout the body and rises up into the head in sustained resonance. The amplitude of this sine wave pattern, when measured with a sensitive, seismograph-type instrument is about three times the average of the sound volume produced by the heart when it is operating normally. Bentov's biomedical model shows that this resonance is of considerable importance since it is directly transmitted to and impacts upon the brain. The resulting vibration is received and transmitted into the brain itself via the fluid-filled third and left ventricles located above the brain stem. An electromagnetic pulse is then generated which stimulates the brain to raise the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output, just as Dr. Twemlow observed in his research on the effects of the hemi-sync tapes. The brain is contained in a tight membrane called the dura, which is in turn cushioned by a thin layer of fluid located between it and the skull. As the coherent resonance produced by the human heart in a state of profound relaxation, reaches the fluid layer surrounding the brain. It sets up a rhythmic pattern in which the brain moves up and down approximately 0.005 to 0.010 millimeters in a continuous pattern. The self-reinforcing character of resonant behavior accounts for the body's ability to sustain this movement, despite the minimal level of energy involved. In this way, the entire body, based on its own micromotion, functions as a tuned vibrational system which transfers energy in a range of between 6.8 and 7.5 Hz into the Earth's ionospheric cavity, which itself resonates at about 7.5 Hz. Of this process, Bentov states, this is occurring at a very long wavelength of about 40,000 km, or just about the perimeter of the planet. In other words, the signal from the movement of our bodies will travel around the world in about one-seventh of a second through the electrostatic field in which we are embedded. Such a long wavelength knows no obstacles, and its strength does not attenuate much over large distances. Naturally it will go through just about anything, metal, concrete, water, and the fields making up our bodies. It is the ideal medium for conveying a telepathic signal. Consequently, the gateway process is designed to rather rapidly induce a state of profound calm within the nervous system and to significantly lower blood pressure to cause the circulatory system, skeleton and all other physical organ systems to begin vibrating coherently at approximately 7.5 cycles per second. The resulting resonance sets up a regular, repetitive sound wave which propagates in consonance with the electrostatic field of the Earth.